Okay, for the last presentations, will be Winilfred Pasamba with the title Benefits of Asynchronous Students Chapel Convocation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Good noon, everyone. Let me present these uh, benefits of asynchronous uh, student convocations. So, this happened in the pandemic. We had a big opportunity to, even if there is lockdown, so we just want to learn uh, some things about this. It is, I say it's a big opportunity because it's the biggest class in the university. It has about 2,400 to 2,700 students. So you can imagine if you have a problem with your forums, which has several hundreds, you can imagine this like times 10. The size to manage this biggest class. And the university, it's like, it's like work education. It's like forum, it's like an STP, which has hundreds of people, and thousands actually, 3,000 almost. We tried to inject ideas using questions. You know, there's an idea where you can, that's how Satan injected also, by asking questions. So because we, people watch the videos, but how to engage them? Because nobody you know, pays attention. So in face-to-face in -face chapel periods, the 40% the uh, had poor grades. So I, I look at the numbers. And in, but in asynchronous, during the pandemic, the grades of 80% were about, about 80% was excellent, yeah? So it seems to promise a lot just to increase the grades. The number one, and this is uh, according to Matthew 13, because uh, the number one cause of backsliding is not understanding the doctrines. Jesus, parable of the sower. So it's not... Uh, this is according to Jesus, yeah? not according to a survey of backsliders. So uh, even that one time we tried, I tried to put as many questions as I could because the grades don't go down. More questions, more information they get, but the grades are still 80% about the same. So I just, so that the most number of questions in one semester we were able to inject into the quizzes was 727 doctrinal questions, yeah? And we tried to make everything like black and white, heaven and hell, God versus Satan, those uh, things. To, so it's still 71% excellent because it's open notes. It's open everything, open chat, GPT open. So we realized that people are sharing their answers in the group chats. So we converted the answers to Bible verses so they will be sharing Bible verses to their classmates. <laughs> So uh, we tried, uh, with, what is this, short and simple. It's a short, simple experiment or research, but the, but the effect can be very big. That's why it's not so complicated, but the effect is far reaching and very big. These computers, they help us reach more people, yeah? So what we can learn, so we experimented, we used Moodle, that's the online platform that I study. Uh, we just made the class and then we recorded and we live stream in PIC. Even if it's a pandemic, we could, uh, we were allowed, the audiovisual people were allowed to be there. And uh, we put the options, you know, in a multiple choice. You cannot manage 2,700 students with essay. You, can, you will have to read the whole, two weeks to read all the answers. So we put only a multiple choice. But, to be able to inject ideas from the Bible, because Ellen White says, one sentence of scripture is worth more than 10,000 of human ideas. To increase the value of the quiz is to put more Bible verses, so times 10,000 times 10,000 every Bible verse, okay? So uh, we realized that on, only 400 people, students watch the videos until the end. The thousands of views we get from PIC and AUP page our fans, they are visitors and friends. Because we have, we have 6,000, 10,000 views. We only have 3,000 students. So only about, so comprehensive, we tried to put all the things in the fundamental beliefs <laughs> inside the sermon. If the preacher forgets, preaches about stewardships and forgets to put tithing, I put there questions about tithing. 
So we had tried, tried to put everything there to reverse the effect that the backsliding is because of the not understanding uh, doctrines. Okay? The basis, why do we do this experiment? Okay, the work of education and redemption are one. What else? The MOAP says student convocation is for all students. So no more need to excuse because it's asynchronous. You don't have to excuse the people who are in OJT and so on because they can watch it later, right? I graduated from UP Open University. There is no excuse even if you have work, you can finish because it's asynchronous. So can be used in place where, uh, where there's, uh, if there are people who stay outside, they don't have regular worship. So like if they have OJT or something, you can replace that. And they are not in uh, regulated residences like we are in campus. These are another basis. We should teach them diligently, our children, our students. Examine yourself, meaning quizzes, yeah? Quizzes, doctrinal quizzes. Let us examine and test our ways if we still understand the Lord. And of course, we have to fix the truth in their mind while we read along the road, while we drive, when you get up, etc. And to make our students more intelligent, I have more understanding than all my teachers for their testimonies or my meditation. It's very important to have basis. It should be the work of every teacher to make prominent these truths that have called us out as a peculiar. So if some teachers cannot really uh, help to do that, at least this one will uh, compensate, yeah? None but those who have fortified the mind with the truths of the Bible stand through the great last conflict. So of course, it is a continuous sanctification. Results, four times more excellent grades than face-to-face. -face. I'm not saying face-to-face -face is bad because the Bible also says you come together more as the day approaches. So, but if we combine, maybe we can get more, yeah, more people in the net. So, sorry, somebody's asking, okay, okay. So excuses can be eliminated. The question, my friends, is this baptism. This is, uh, I tried to ask who wants to be, get baptized. Everybody answered yes, but nobody came to church. <laughs> to actually come. So I was thinking maybe they think it's a quiz answer and they have to answer correctly. <laughs> At least they understand what is correct, but to, to come, I don't know how to convert it. So that, Oh, maybe, maybe, asynchronous baptism, okay. That one I, I, I have never thought of measuring because we can only, I can only count what is coming out in the computer. So these are the, what happened when we converted it used to be 36% poor, 20% excellent. When the Ta'al erupted, we had exempt everyone. And then the next semester, we tried. We put 146 questions. This is the number of people. This is the number of students. These are the number of attendees. Some people attend and take the quiz even if they're not students. They like it, yeah? Some people really like chapel, even if they're not students. So uh, the last one is this one. 700, still almost the same, yeah? Almost the same, about 80, 70%. When it's face-to-face, -face, again, excellent, went down to 23% again. So maybe the asynchronous can help. So recommendation, asynchronous possibilities to all, all religions, not only chapel, we wish to put everything that is Adventist belief and sermon in the internet because it also helped me strengthen my faith. And Ellen White says, what helped you come near to Jesus, you also want, you, it to, you want to use it to bring others to Jesus. That's the reason why I'm interested in this. Train people to multiply because I want to do it, but you know, we have, the camera is, will not get tired, but you will get tired. So we, the more people you can train, the more people you can, uh, can do the same thing that you're doing. And for teaching more pedagogical experiments to verify the observations that uh, we were able to uh, that's all. Thank you. So, Thank you. if you have questions, please. No questions. Okay. So, sir, have you compared the asynchronous and the face-to-face? So, the basis of your conclusion that the asynchronous is because of the brain. And 
Uh, no, Pastor. How, uh, in in face to face, they only check attendance. So if you look at the people, they are playing in their cell phones. So even if attendance, I think it cannot you cannot measure really the. But there are many baptisms in face to face. So uh, that one we have to. I don't know if what to do with that one. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Sorry, if it's me again. But then, uh, I have a question. Maybe, uh, or give me a suggestion. Maybe you can take a look also on the different demographic variables and what does um, it says about the responses. Would that be different from male or female, from first year to fourth year, from SB or not SB, or so on? Maybe you can check on that so that the. the um, <laughs> You know, the, the result will be more inclusive and it can provide more information for a policy recommendation in school, how we can improve our service, and then yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we have to look also uh, for the basis of uh, differentiating those things, yeah. Of course, in the Bible, it counts men, but it, for, it doesn't count women and so on. So we want, I want my study to, the methodology, we should be, that's why I did this one. Because there is methodology, so this is, a, this is not only academic; it's also spiritual, and it has to be. I want to find, to find the methodology from the Bible. So. Thank you very much for the presentation, and I would like to present this speaker for Brother Winifred Pasamba for delivering an oral presentation entitled Benefits of Asynchronous Students, Chapel Convocations. And this figure signed by the presidents of the collaborative uh, universities. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Balila, yes. Which approach do you think so that our student will be more religious? Asynchronous or synchronous? Excellent question. Jesus came to be synchronous. <laughs> but he also told the writers, Habakkuk 2.22, write the vision. It is asynchronous. Right? So... Bible, you can see both in the Bible. Not my idea. We just read Bible. Amen. Everything is there. <laughs> Thank you very much for the presentations and for the attendance for uh, this first uh, parallel sessions. And we'll close our sessions. Pastor Waloy, would you like to offer a word of prayer for close the sessions? Let's pray. Thank you, loving Father, for the success of our presentations this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the wisdom that we gain from these academic exercises. Help us, help us that we can continue to use those knowledge so that we can uh, apply it also and we can also be a blessing to the institutions that we are serving. Thank you for being with us, and may you dismiss us with your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. See you for the next session.